Hi Nat5, so we're looking at respiration and the detail involved in the reactions inside it. Okay, so you need to know quite a lot of detail here and pretty much everything that's here you need to know. So first stage of respiration is called glycolysis. Uh, so you just need to know that. Okay, we start off with glucose and glucose is a six carbon molecule and you're going to split it into two. So hoping the sums are up for this, we're going to get two three carbon molecules and the name of that is pyruvate. Okay, you will often see this written as pyruvic acid in older books, um, but pyruvate is the term that you need to use. That gets you enough energy to produce two molecules of ATP. So we start with our six, we split it into threes, and we get enough energy generated to get our two ATPs. So it's not a lot of energy from that first stage. And this first stage is taking place in the cytoplasm. Okay, so moving on, there is now an option because it can go down two different possible routes. So it can either go down route one with oxygen present and it's going to go aerobic. So if there's oxygen present in aerobic respiration, you should know where this is going. It's going to have to go to the mitochondria because that's what you know the mitochondria is for. So you're going to take that pyruvate that you already got and you're going to basically break it all the rest of the way down that you can. If you don't have any oxygen, then you go down a series of pathways called fermentation. Now, fermentation pathways are different if you're a plant or an animal, and you need to know both of them. So if you're a plant, you're going to break down your pyruvate into carbon dioxide and ethanol. And if you're an animal, you're going to convert it into lactate. OK, so we're going to look at these routes next. So aerobic, so this is everybody. If there's oxygen present and you've got as far as your pyruvate. OK, so your pyruvate that you made in stage one is really toxic it's not a nice chemical so you're gonna have to get rid of it if you've got oxygen you can put it into the mitochondria and you can run it through a whole series of reactions and i'm not even going to attempt to put all of them in i'm just putting a cycle and we can break it down and at every carbon that comes in we can take back out and it's going to come out as carbon dioxide so we're going to get three of them for every pyruvate that we put in and we've also got some extra hydrogen which we are going to get rid of as water using the oxygen again OK, so we've now got our normal aerobic respiration, which was we started with glucose and oxygen and ended up with carbon dioxide and water and energy. Now, this is actually where you get the most energy. So you remember, we've got two from the top and now you get a whole massive pile. OK, you actually go around this twice because you've got two pyruvates. So you actually managed to get 38 ATPs in total if you can go aerobic. You don't need to give the number. You need to say it's a lot. OK. In animals, if we don't have oxygen, then our fermentation pathway is to take our pyruvate and convert it to lactate. Now, pyruvate is really nasty. Lactate is kind of nasty. So we deal with it for a short time. But if it builds up, it starts to cause pain. You will felt this. This is muscle fatigue. So if we get any oxygen back, we can actually go back the way and change it from lactate back to pyruvate. And that's really useful because then we can just go straight into aerobic. But that's only if oxygen becomes available, which is why you need to rest if you have built up muscle fatigue. So what happens with our pyruvate? Go to lactate and everyone that does that builds up this oxygen debt. And then as we get oxygen back in our system, we can go back the way and that's repaying. The oxygen debt, removing it. And now we're back to pyruvate and we can go through to the mitochondria. So this is really quite a good system, but we can't keep doing it forever. There's a point at which it just doesn't work. OK, but we can reverse what we're doing, which is really useful. In plants, you've not got that option because what plants do is they convert the pyruvate because we need to get rid of it because it's really nasty to ethanol and carbon dioxide. So the carbon dioxide just diffuses and released. So what we've done is we've got rid of one of our carbons. We can't turn a two back to a three without the one. So our pyruvate changes in a two and a one and that one goes away. This is irreversible and that's important. All of the fermentation pathways low yield because all we get is that two from the top from the initial stage and the products that they make are not nice. Okay. Here's a full summary of the whole thing. Make sure you're happy with this. So we've got our glucose, break it down into pyruvate, get a little bit of energy out. If we've got oxygen, we're going to go to carbon dioxide and water and a whole pile of, of energy out. 
If we've got no oxygen and it's a plant, then we're going to change it to ethanol and carbon dioxide. This is your fermentation in plants. In animals, we're going to go to lactate, building up an oxygen debt, and it's reversible so we can go back to pyruvate. Okay, you need to be able to do the whole thing. And you also need to be able to see where they're happening. So all of this lot is in the cytoplasm, but this little bit here is in the mitochondria. And that's your respiration.